right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Fireworks on the 4th, but it looks like it's Mother Nature's show. We're tracking the latest timing on thunderstorm chances and the weather impact heading toward the holiday. A new bill added to the budget, how it will bring closure to families of missing persons across the state. Gun violence claims the life of another teen. It makes you feel unsafe, that you're not safe in your own community anymore. Concerned parents fed up what they say needs to be done to make a change. A 17-year-old boy from Glasgow Village is the latest young victim of gun violence in St. Louis County. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. And a disturbing development, a 15-year-old is now charged in this case. New tonight, parents in that neighborhood are sounding the alarm about guns again and sharing their concerns with Five on Your Side's Robert Townsend. Robert. Mike and Kelly, the past month has definitely been a violent one in Glasgow Village. Teens and adults there have lost their lives to the violence that's prompted one mom to pack up. For the past seven years, Lakeisha Hill has lived in this Glasgow Village neighborhood in unincorporated North St. Louis County. This part of the block right here has been like the best part. She and others say in the last two years, gunfire has ruined their neighborhood. We're hearing them more frequently, you know, um, during hours of the night, midnight, sometime during the day. This incident that happened down here on Modoc. That's the worst that it has ever been. Just after one last Thursday afternoon, police went to this street after gunshots rang out. They say 17-year-old Khalil Stanley had been shot. He died Sunday at a hospital. That's scary, and it's close to home. Prosecutors charged a 15-year-old male with involuntary manslaughter. Lakeisha Hill says her son knew both boys and went to Riverview High School with them. She also tells Five on Your Side the victim and suspect were handling a gun inside a home when it went off. They would be juniors this year. It's just a lot of concerns um, with a lot of these youth. I think the parents need to do a better job of taking control of their kids. What's more, there have been five deadly shootings in Glasgow Village in the past month. Shootings that have taken and impacted young lives. We need to still have some type of community for our children. We have to make the community better. That's the only way that it's going to get better. A passionate plea from a mom who's had enough. I'm moving at the end of the month. This is too much for me. The 15-year-old suspect charged in Khalil Stanley's death is being held at the St. Louis County Family Court. Police say the investigation is ongoing. They're asking anyone with any information to call St. Louis County Police. Thank you, Robert. A man remains in critical condition tonight, just days after he was shot during his backyard wedding reception. Dolce and Manuel Gonzalez married Friday night. Then they celebrated at their Dutchtown home. The couple together for a decade share two children. In the middle of the party, two men in masks walked through the gate and started going through people's pockets. You can see them here on the ring door video. They shot Manuel Gonzalez in the head. They just said, don't move. As soon as he said that, I ran inside so I didn't witness when he got shot. I heard the gunshot when I was running through the house. There are no arrests and family is asking if anyone has any information or ring door video to call police. Right now, there's a GoFundMe set up to help the family. If you'd like to help, visit KSDK.com and go to the section as seen on TV. Well, sunshine will soon give way to storm clouds. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is breaking down the upcoming shift in our forecast. Scott? Yeah, we are talking about changes coming our way here and the weather impact forecast Going into the next few days, the biggest impact is going to be by the time we get to Wednesday and into Wednesday night and Thursday, which includes the 4th of July. Right now, we're going with a weather impact day for Thursday, Wednesday afternoon, starting 3 to 9 o'clock. But Thursday into Friday, there are potentially more strong thunderstorms across the area. Already, the Storm Prediction Center has this area southeast of St. Louis highlighted for that risk for some damaging winds, maybe some hail. But we also have the potential for having heavy rainfall and it's several waves of rain and thunder that we'll be dealing with. The first arrives early on Wednesday morning and then late Wednesday afternoon, some stronger storms and then potentially Thursday morning. This is off and on right into early Friday and it looks like it's going to impact our fireworks displays as well. Good news is it's still really comfortable tonight. We're dropping back into the 60s, even some 50s east of St. Louis with pleasant conditions and a mainly clear sky. We'll talk more about what's ahead 
for this long holiday weekend for many in a few minutes. See you then, Scott. Tonight, another alarming incident involving a minor with a gel blaster toy gun, triggering an urgent police investigation. Just last week, we reported on a teen firing gel beads into a crowded Creepcore movie theater. Now, Florissant police are in pursuit of a minor who targeted a real estate worker with the same type of weapon. As Brent Solomon joins us to explain, things quickly escalated from there. They sure did, Mike and Kelly. Now there's a warning coming in from police tonight. Speak with your kids about using toy guns in public because you never know what the person on the other end might do if they believe they're in harm's way. A cracked windshield and bullet holes left in a local real estate worker's car. Too shaken up to speak on camera, he tells us he was on the job when shooters showed up, first firing at him with toy guns like these, and then switching to real guns. This photo shows Florissant police arriving to Hummingbird Drive last week. Our society has forced us into this higher level of consciousness when it comes to safety. Carlos Turner is a real estate agent with Platinum Realty. He says many of his counterparts are now starting to arm themselves on the job. In our profession, obviously, you go into different neighborhoods, you're going into homes that are empty, maybe empty or maybe not. You really don't know what you're walking into. He says even when showing properties to clients for the first time, he tries to meet them in a public place beforehand to fill them out. I try to get to the appointment early, turn on the lights, open up all the blinds, you know, see where the exits are in the building. All in the name of safety. Monday, Florissant's police chief said he's urging all communities to remain vigilant as there has been a recent increase in juveniles using jail blasters in public areas. We are committed, he says, to ensuring public safety and ask parents to educate their children about the potential risks and legal implications of using these devices irresponsibly. The parents have to be a little bit more involved and start drawing some boundaries. Fortunately, no one was hurt here, but if you know anything that can help police get to the bottom of the crime, give Florissant Police a call. That number is 314-831-7000. Thank you, Brent. 19 protesters arrested during yesterday's Pride Parade have been released. A group of pro-Palestinian protesters blocked Market Street in downtown St. Louis for about an hour. The protesters called for an end to the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. They were also asking Pride STL to stop accepting funding from Boeing, which does business with Israel. Pride STL Director of Diversity and Inclusion told us the priority is to keep the festival free so that everyone can attend. The protesters say they were treated unfairly. If we start denying or refusing sponsorship from companies that our community doesn't like, then we're gonna to have to start charging. People of our own community mocking us and threatening us with violence. Yet the Palestinian people face daily violence that is simply unimaginable to most Americans. Pride STL told Five in Your Side that despite the protests, they still saw record numbers of people at their event. Governor Mike Parson's pan brought a glimmer of hope to families across Missouri on Friday. The newly signed state budget includes funding to identify long unidentified human remains, potentially solving cold cases. Five on your side's Laura Barcheski talked with a family that's been waiting 45 years for some closure. It's one of those things where it's hard to believe that after this long, we're still searching for her. On April 17th, 1979, 19-year-old Cheryl Ann Shear went to work at a gas station in Scott City, Missouri, just outside Cape Girardeau, when she was abducted at 1130 in the morning. Her car, all her personal belongings, everything was left. So it's not like she just went and she just went off because everything of hers was left. They've had leads in the case over the years, but her body has never been found. Cheryl's story is one that shocked and pushed legislators like state representative Trisha Burns to put 1.5 million in the state budget for advanced DNA testing of unidentified bodies and remains. Not only does it create closure for families, but this is also a key to unsolved mysteries that have plagued communities and law enforcement agencies. What is our backlog of cases of unidentified persons look like? Last time when I was um, working on letters to the governor's office, we were at 120, and that number could have fluctuated over the last month or two. Dr. Lindsay Trammell, a forensic anthropologist in the St. Louis County Medical Examiner's Office, says identifying remains is tough even with new technology. It is my job once they are brought into the medical examiner's office to look at 
the remains, um, especially when they're not recognizable. She then gives that information to law enforcement to try and match it to a missing person, but that doesn't always work, which is where advanced DNA testing comes in. The last thing that we are going to do is submit maybe a bone or you know a tooth sample for DNA analysis. And there isn't a lab in the state of Missouri that actually has that technology. For those reasons, the process took years and was very expensive. With this new funding, the Missouri State Highway Patrol will be able to send off all the unidentified remains to a contractor so maybe families like Cheryl's can find peace. Having this is, is going to give everyone more opportunity to, to submit things uh, for analysis and hopefully, you know, identify these individuals and be able to bring them home to their families. Reporting in St. Louis County, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Now the next step is for a DNA lab to be selected and then families of missing people will be notified about the process. A landmark decision, former President Trump is granted partial immunity in the January 6th case, what this means ahead of the November election, making mental health a priority. Honestly, it's a constant battle. Every day I'm working on my mentality, I'm working on my mind-body connection. As athletes prepare for their journey to Paris, the moves they are making to be advocates for themselves and others. It's summer thunderstorm season and the storms are pretty plentiful well to our west when our humidity returns and the storms ramping up.